Okay, next we're going to get into some keyframing. Um, for the example, I'm going to place the sphere in 3D Studio Max and turn on Auto Key. Okay, when you do that, you can see that the timeline is highlighted. And by the way, you can change the length of the timeline by clicking on this icon here and then changing length. See, so watch what happens when I scroll that up or down. Okay. In this mode, Auto Key, um, it'll detect any movement and place a keyframe on the timeline for me. So, for example, if I want it to start on this side of the screen and end up on this side of the screen, I can just simply move the object and I'll need to place the first keyframe in by hitting the key button and you can see that the the keyframe drops on the uh, timeline. Then, see, by the end of the animation, I want it to be on this side. Well, I can just move this slider over by clicking and dragging, and then move my object. And when I let go, it automatically places a keyframe here. And the computer does all the work for you. It does the tween in between point A and point B. So if I slide this around, you can see that the object moves. Now, we're not seeing it move in the left viewport, but that's because of the angle. It is moving. It's just moving um, towards and away from us. You can also hit play, the little play button here, and it'll loop your animation. So if I wanted to have it go in a triangular motion, I could go to the middle of the timeline and move it again. And then it would know, the computer would know that here at this point, in the very beginning, we want it here. In the middle point, we want it at the top. And at the end point, we want it over here. So it would go in this motion. See? If I hit play, that's what I get. And notice that the computer does all the work as far as the calculations. You don't have to do each and every keyframe. Now, um, if I take Auto Key off, okay, in that situation, um, I could choose Set Key, and then suppose I wanted to uh, make, uh, at this point in the timeline, make the object come over here. Notice that it didn't automatically set the keyframe there. I have to actually manually hit this key um, button again, and that'll place the keyframe. So it just depends on your preference. If you want to work in auto key, you can do that, and it automatically places the keyframe for you. And if we work in set key, It does not automatically place the key frame for you. You'd have to hit the key button in order to get it to uh, put a new key frame there. So how does this translate into um, a project or a, a work or an animation? Well, what I've done is um, I've created this bowling ball with a bowling pin. Give it a second, it'll open. Um, and um, I thought this would be a good file to um, sort of show how this might um, transfer over to a real world project. Uh, I just want to knock this pin down with this bowling ball. So um, I'll turn on my auto key. And uh, I can work in any viewport. So from the top viewport, uh, I'll bring the ball all the way to the left. 
Remember the first one you've got to actually set. So I'll set it there. And then uh, say by the end of the timeline, I want the ball to be completely off the screen. If you look in the bottom right viewport, you can see that at this point it's all the way over here on the uh, off of the screen. So, so far this is what we've got. And it's going straight through the pin. So we'll actually have to go in and uh, manually move this pin around. So uh, I'm going to hold Alt, hit W, zoom in, and I'm going to select the pin. And I want you to notice something that happens. Um, you see how we have keyframes here and here? And that's because the ball is selected and those keyframes are attached to that object. If I click the pin, there's no keyframes. And that's because each object has its own separate keyframes. So um, if I click the ball again, they come back. These are the ones for that. And you may have, uh, you know, complex models where you've got several objects on one model. Um, and you want to animate each thing differently. For example, uh, if you have a biped with two arms, you may animate one arm and have it doing one thing and then the other arm doing something else. And that's where this comes in handy. Um, so at this point, this is the point of impact right here. So before that, we want to make sure that it's not moving. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the keyframe. And... Uh, the key button. So the pin hasn't moved yet. At this point, it moves a little bit. It moves a little bit this way. So from here to here, it boom. Um, and then from here to here, we're going to see some action. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the pin, bring it up. Boom. See? And maybe here, uh, bring it further back, spin it around again. And then maybe over here, it's down here, and uh, it makes contact. And then at this point, uh, it, it rotates back up a little bit as it continues moving. Okay, that, that doesn't look good, so I'm going to undo. Control-Z, 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 get, get it back to where I had it. So, um, instead of that motion, maybe it'll look more realistic if I uh, continue it, continue the rotation of it. You want to try and get it to flow. Got it going a little too high. Okay, and let's see, I think this is going to be a little too straight. If I go to the other viewports, well, may maybe not. It looks okay. Uh, really, what I'm going to render out is this bottom right viewport. So, as long as it looks good in there, should be all set. And one thing I'm noticing, uh, the little holes where you put the, uh, the thumb, finger, and the... Uh, Bowling ball. These, um, they should be rotating also. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the uh, bowling ball. So I'm going to click on that. And we'll say um, maybe at this point, point A, I'm going to add rotation to it. And it's uh, it memorizes the different um, aspects of the animation separately. So... I should actually change the uh, pivot point of this. Um,
say effect pivot only if you go to hierarchy effect pivot only you can change the pivot point Okay, so uh, this way, when I rotate it, see it rotates on that uh, new axis that I've created for it. So we'll say at this point we want it there, and um, at this point uh, we want it here. So if you look in the bottom right, viewport that looks more realistic that's how a bowling ball moves and you'll notice that um the bowling ball is hovering a little bit in this viewport that's okay you don't have to get real detailed with this i just want to see that you're able to uh you know make a keyframe animation i have to get too detailed so let's go ahead and render this out. How do we render out a video? Well, let me take off auto key first. I'm going to click it again so it comes off. Um, first go under rendering, choose render, and uh, you'll want to go down to um, render output and choose files. And then you'll want to go uh, tell it where to save. So the desktop is fine, and I'll call this uh, final keyframe, and uh, maybe my initials. And then um, I can tell it all kinds of file types down here, um, QuickTime, um, AVI. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose AVI. Pretty good uh, choice, and um, go ahead and hit save, and it'll ask you what quality, so I'll just hit OK. Um, now when I click render, hmm, it's got a problem with that internal error. Let me see what's going on. Oh, I need to tell it the range from 0 to 100. I'm going to go ahead and click render again. Okay, I'm getting that error, so I'm just going to try a different file type under render output and try a quick time. Okay, that's working, so we're in good shape. And it'll just begin to render out your animation. So this is what you want to do. You want to make sure that it's a reasonable file type. And uh, I think by us compressing this to a quick time, that was a good move because uh, it'll be a smaller file size, which is better for emailing or posting on the web and stuff like that. Um, the AVI file, uh, especially if it's uncompressed, tends to be very large. So um, once this is complete, we can go to the desktop and view our end result. And remember, uh, rendering takes a while. Um, you know, this is a very short animation, and you can see how long it's taking to render this out. And the more lights you put and the more uh, objects you put, the longer it'll take for the computer to render each frame. Okay, now I'm going to go to the desktop. 
And here's our file, final keyframe, JD, double click it. Make sure it works. Yep. It works. So um, this way you know more or less what I'm looking for. I used a bowling ball and a bowling pin. You can do the same or you can choose any other two objects. The, uh, the project is to have uh, keyframing worked into a scene and to have two, at least two, um, different objects interacting.